In this tutorial, we will explore propagation models and how to pick the right one and how to use them and tune them because tuning them is essential to create accurate modeling. Out of the box, they might be 50% accurate. With tuning, you can get them very, very accurate to within three decibels potentially. The first model is the default. We recommend this model if you're not sure. And this model is the Irregular Terrain model or the Longley Rice, as it's nicknamed. It was developed for TV broadcasting in the US and continues to be used by the FCC today for coverage validation. Its recommended ceiling is 20 gigahertz. In practice, we recommend you don't use this above about six gigahertz. Uh, you should use another model like the Stanford model for that. But for most purposes, this does the job. It's got double knife edge diffraction, so we can do several buildings instead of just one obstacle, which we'll demonstrate now. And it can be tuned with the reliability and the context values. So for the demos here, we're going to use consistent settings of 800 megahertz and uh, eight meter mast. This location has been picked to provide a contrast between an industrial area to the east and an open area over the river to the west. So let's create a model at five meter resolution so we can talk about the outputs and the advantages and disadvantages of each model. So the ITM is optimized for UHF. It's uh, great for most uh, UHF ground-based purposes. It's got very complex diffraction routines so that we can model multiple obstructions. And to prove what that means, see this location here with these large buildings. If I go on the back side of this building with the path profile tool and run my mouse along the bottom here, I can see the first obstacle is here and the second obstacle is here. And in both cases, it's been able to model diffraction beyond the obstacles. So this area of coverage here, these, um, these obstacles here, which are covered, um, this is diffraction coming from here. Now, if we were to switch off the diffraction, this will show us line of sight LOS only. So if we compare this, it warns us you have disabled diffraction. It says it's recommended. Well, now we see that we've lost all the non-line of sight areas and we've lost most of the coverage in the process. So depending on your use case, line of sight may be preferable, especially if we're talking something like 5G in a city, for example, where line of sight is critical. Okay, let's move on to the Egley model. This is a very simple general purpose model, so it's not as thorough as the ITM model. And it provides a, in this case, a more conservative prediction with the same parameters. So if, with this uh, setup here, this is equivalent to the most conservative ITM profile, whereas if I knock this back to about 50% reliability and remove the fade margin, well, we'll now get coverage which is more consistent with what we saw earlier with the ITM model. Where we've got great coverage over the river and uh, weaker coverage to the east. Notice, as we talked about the diffraction earlier, um, the largest building over here is just located there. You can tell by the shadow, and that is casting a, a deep shadow. But the diffraction here is simple compared with the ITM model. So this is what's called single knife edge diffraction. And this is also available in the GPU engine, which is significant because the ITM model is not yet in the GPU engine as of March 2023. Okay, here we have an ITU model. It's the 529, which is a VHF, UHF uh, terrestrial model. Now in this, in the default setup here, this one does come in as conservative. So it is ITU ratified, but it is conservative. So use it with care. Okay, moving on. Uh, line of sight, this is just a free space path loss model. So completely opposite uh, output this time. So this is um, 
great line of sight, uh, but you'll notice that this isn't line of sight because we saw line of sight earlier with the ITM model, and this is actually with diffraction. So if we switch off the diffraction, this will now be line of sight. So that is the free space path loss model with diffraction off, which gives you line of sight. So it's not very relevant because you could actually use any model and achieve line of sight. Okay, Okamura Hata. So developed around about VHF, UHF frequencies in Tokyo a long time ago and still relevant for 4G networks today. And so to get the best out of Hata, uh, the transmitter needs to be high and the receiver needs to be low. If you try any other combination with low transmitter, high receiver, expect crazy results. So let's just demonstrate that now. So I'll just put on the knife edge first of all and we'll show a good Hatter model, which is here. And then let's mess around with our settings and do a bad Hatter model. So if I bring the height right down uh, to two meters and try that, I'm receiving a warning here, an error even, saying the lower transmission height for the Hatter model is three meters. So you can only do three meters. So let's put in three. And then for our receiver, let's go higher than three. Let's say the receivers are at four. Okay, so this is how not to use the Hatter model. And you receive um, a prediction which not only is very optimistic, but is actually um, bad. You know, we've got a big chunk missing here, which doesn't make any sense, because if there was four meter masts on the river, they would be covered. So the Hatter model is very simple and it's quite fragile. You need to understand how it was made and how it's meant to be used. Okay, the cost model, before I play with cost, I'm just going to put these heights back as they were. The cost model is an extension of the Hatter model, so the same um, issues apply. So uh, used correctly, it can give you better coverage up at two gigahertz uh, than Hatter. Used incorrectly, it will give you some, uh, some bad values if you have a low transmitter and a high receiver. So. The cost is uh, an improvement on Hatter. Okay, Ericsson 999, a uh, very similar frequency band up in the sort of UHF cellular spectrum here, uh, developed around about a similar era, and also a very simple model. Now this one has quite a steep fall off, so it starts off um, very, very strong next to the transmitter, and then it falls away, and it finishes up after a couple of kilometers uh, with a signal reading consistent with the other models. So it is it's quite a different curve uh, to the others. Okay, the Stanford model. Now the Stanford model is a microwave model which kicks in where a lot of the other models stop. So once we get up to sort of two gigahertz in frequency, uh, we need to start thinking about moving to the Stanford model. Unless you're just doing line of sight planning, in which case you could crack on with any of the models in line of sight mode. So the Stanford model being designed for a high frequency does not like low frequencies. Lower limit for Stanford University is 1900 megahertz. So I'm going to say my frequency is 3800, so frequencies that are popular now with um, a lot of fixed wireless access. And at that frequency, uh, with that wavelength, you're not going as far as we were earlier with, with 800 megs. And we're also uh, getting some interesting results. And by interesting, uh, if you look over here to the south, you'll see that uh, this tall building, whilst it's able to um, model diffraction off the first obstacle here, um, it's not faring so well with the second obstacle over here, which was to be expected because this is single knife edge diffraction. So if you're doing Stanford at this sort of frequency, consider switching diffraction off because at that frequency, diffraction's going to be minimal anyway. So switch the diffraction off and you end up with something like this. So Stanford WiMAX model with diffraction off showing pure line of sight. So if you're doing 5G or fixed wireless access, uh, this could be a good candidate, especially if you've got high resolution LiDAR data. Okay, the plain earth loss model, I'm just going to go back to 800 megahertz. 
Now the plane earth loss model is a very simple model which um, which just shows, um, as the name suggests, loss through the Earth. So it's not, uh, it's not a air propagation model in that respect. Okay, ITU model, as you might have seen earlier in another video, is a reference model. So this is a best case scenario with no obstructions, no receiver loss, no transmitter loss. Uh, this is the absolute best. So this will normally be a, a sea of red and orange. Let's have a look. There we are. So great coverage and diffraction over here, just visible as light blue. Now, you can try and use the free space path loss model by bumping the reliability right up to 99% and putting on a conservative profile uh, which will add another 10 dB of loss. But you were still, even with the most conservative settings, we're still coming in more optimistic than all the other empirical models. So my recommendation for using this model is to treat it as a reference model, not as an actual real-world propagation model. Or if you must use it, just use it for line of sight. Now this model is used to power the best site analysis tool, which you'll see in an analysis video, um, but that is a completely different use case. That is about um, intersection and visibility, intervisibility between locations. Okay. So those are the propagation models. Recommend the ITM on about 95% with average. And diffraction for that one, if you're doing VHF, UHF, needs to be knife edge.